Good morning, Team Iceland. OMG. I'm going to the volcano, you guys. All right, so here's the deal. It's September. This girl has not hiked to the volcano since it started erupting, which was in March. I know. But let me tell you, hiking to a volcano is not conducive with a new infant. So, I have not been there yet. I've been there by helicopter, and that's for a different video. But trust me when I say, it has not been easy to not have gone to this cano yet. So I have been plotting and researching and just trying to find a time. And today is the day. And look at this ball in the sky. It's the sun. Um, it's out, which is amazing. Was planning to go yesterday with my good friend Kiana. And I'm really sad that we weren't able to execute because we were seriously planning on it and then it just, the weather, and I I backed out. She was like, no, we, we should still go. And I was like, no. So it was rainy and windy. Anyway, the, I looked ahead because the forecast today I knew was gonna be superb. So we have some blue in the sky. It's not supposed to be very windy until later in the day. I have spent the last few days researching so I've been looking at the route that I want to take and the parking information and the weather and just everything that kind of goes into planning the day at the volcano because let me tell you I think it takes quite a bit of planning okay so the first site that you're gonna to want to check to plan your hike is called volcanoweather.is Pretty self-explanatory, but when you go there, it's gonna bring up the weather forecast and all of the conditions for the hike area. So today, Tuesday, September 21st, it's gonna give you kind of just an overview here of the wind speed and precipitation. Um, it's going to give you a forecast for the next few days. I wouldn't count on that being accurate because the weather in Iceland can change within a day, within a few hours. So I would usually say to plan for one day ahead maximum in, in order to keep it accurate. And then down here, um, you can see the current weather at the eruption site. So really, really high wind speed, you know, the, in the temperature as well. Um, but if you're planning on a time that you're going to be going, then you can change these uh, bubbles here to uh, depict the time that you're going to be doing the hike. And then we'll give you a nice overview of the conditions right here in this box. Today, we are having a crazy windstorm in Iceland, and so the conditions are not good for hiking. So they're saying straight off the bat, bad conditions, um, high wind speeds, hiking not recommended for anyone. Um, we'll talk in a minute that this basically means that the, the eruption site is closed, but either way, you know, this is gonna give you a green, yellow, or red rating, and to tell you a little bit about um, you know, the hiking condition. Scrolling down, we can see here um, that it's gonna break apart why. Um, gas pollution, uh, this obviously is, is talking about the gas that's coming off of the volcano. Um, sometimes the gas pollution is really high and it's you know, dangerous for people to be around, so sometimes that's a concern. The temperature, currently that shouldn't be too much of an issue. We're keeping it above freezing maybe till about November-ish. Either way, um, and then the, the wind, so it's gonna talk about the wind speeds here, um, and then talk about you know if it's okay or you just need to take precautions. Today, the wind speed is crazy, so definitely bad conditions for hiking. Um, and then it's gonna talk about the wetness on the trail itself, so rain during the hike, you know, wet and muddy condition. So just keeping that in mind. If we scroll down even further, we can see the volcanic activity. So. Basically, um, this is a, a graph of the, the activity coming out of the volcano. If we look at Saturday, you know, during the middle of the day when I was thinking about going, um, the activity was really high. There was all that nice red lava coming out of the volcano and then it significantly dropped overnight. And this is basically at an all time low by the time that I got there the next day. 
Either way, this is kind of a nice thing to, to track as well, because if you want to see that hot lava and that's important to you, then you can always look if the volcano is active or not. So this kind of on and off volcanic activity that's typical for this volcano since it started, it's been on and off a few times. So just keep that in mind. Scroll down even further, um, you can see the overview of the trails. Um, I'm going to talk about that in more detail in just a second. And then down even further, you can see some frequently asked questions that people have, read through that. And then what I like to check is the webcams as well, because these are live webcams in two different areas along the hike that you can check to see the conditions, um, you know, the daylight, if the lava is coming, things like that. So definitely check those out. Moving on to the next website that I recommend, which is called safetravel.is. So you want to go here, click on eruption in Reykjanes. And then this will bring you to the page that it's talking about, um, you know, the eruption, the conditions, the trails and everything like that. So they're saying Tuesday today, the eruption site is closed, um, which we just saw on the other site. But this is your definitive answer of if you're even going to be able to ex access the hike itself. Um, and then uh, here it's talking about the different routes that are open. So, you know, route A is closed now. And so they have route B and C. It's telling you a little bit of blurb about that, um, you know, how long it takes, you know, the difficulty and everything like that. And then if you scroll down, what I like here are the links for um, the hiking route itself. So click on the first one and it will bring you to this map of the area. So the red is the kind of line of volcanoes. The purple is all of the lava flow that's come so far. The red down here is the road, and then you have one parking area here, another one over here, and then the trail B goes this way, and the trail C goes this way. So based on that, you can make your decision for the day uh, based on all the information, which trail you wanna tackle. Do not forget to check this website. It's very, very helpful. And then if you scroll down, they have even more helpful kind of like tips and advice and everything like that. So definitely check both of these sites out before you even attempt to hike to the volcano. So today I have chosen to hike Trail C. Trail B from my research that I've gathered is longer and more difficult. And then you, with that one, you get up closer to the actual crater where the lava is originating, but it actually puts you on the backside of the crater. So I do want to get kind of like that nice line drive to the volcano with the lava spilling out rather than going behind it. So that's why I have chosen Route C. With that, the, the trail is a little bit easier than B at the moment, um, a bit shorter, and we're talking like I think one to two hours round trip. Then the drive is about an hour from Reykjavik. So total, this is probably going to be a five hour deal. Let's go. just parked lots of people here I can see it is a nice day and everyone knows about it um, so let's just get our hiking boots on and uh, spend the next few hours hiking Yee! I'm so excited let's do it Here is the start of the hike. You can see people hiking all the way up this spine of the mountain. So this um, trail C is called Langahrikr, which means long spine. Can you even handle this weather? There's no wind. This is rare, <laughs> super rare. It does not feel like autumn. All right, so you get to the top of the first little 
mini ascent. It took about three minutes to get here. And you get already a view just over the lava field here. Steaming hot and fresh, fresh lava. Um, so from here, you can walk down, be really, really close to that area. I can also see over here some vents where the fresh lava that's coming out of the crater right now is, is poking up. So this is why it's super important to not walk on the lava because the new stuff is pushing underneath. So when you get to this marker right here, this is another lookout area a lot of people are stopping at. So from here you can see uh, over the valley and there is the main crater right there. easy. I made it up here in 50 minutes but I could, could have been faster because I stopped a couple times for viewpoints and videos. Currently there is no active lava flowing out of the crater so I am 0 for 2 for seeing that. But huge lava field and is it cool to see the volcano? I mean you can see that there's like gas in it right now. Cool. Yes. Tons of people here today. Lots and lots and lots of people. So everyone knows that it's a nice day. The views around here, you guys, it's so incredible. It's just like 360 <laughs> gorgeous. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a little lunch and enjoy being up here. Of course, it's a bit windier at the top. So I'm glad that I brought a jacket. Since there's no activity and the wind is picking up a bit, I'm gonna head back. I thought about doing a night hike though, so maybe, maybe. Anyway, I'm still glad that I got to do the hike and t tell you guys all about it. So I hope that this video helped. One last view, the Kano. I was up here for about 45 minutes. But that's just kind of like taking a little video, having a snack, just hanging out. But if it was active, I probably would have stayed here much longer. All right, let's hike down.